Hello, as you probably can tell or not tell, is that I sound a bit congested and nasally, a bit more than usual. I know I am English, obviously, or British, but I do have, in fact, have a cold. And having a cold, as it turns out, is a major stressor on the body. So yeah, I do feel a bit rough, but I thought what better thing to do than have a rest all day, which I've been doing anyway, is to do a review slash summary, more summary than a review, of this book, uh, a book that I really like, uh, called The Stress Test by Dr. Ian Robinson, How Pressure Can Make You Stronger and Sharper. I really like this book because unlike other books in the self-help genre, I think I can see that Ian Robinson thinks that we should go through stress, it's unavoidable, than rather than try and circumnavigate it in some way. So I'm going to try and offer a little summary of the book and the, the reasons why I like it. So yeah, let's do it. So he says in the first chapters, it all partly boils down to what we focus our attention on. When we are anxious, our minds become like a missile defense system on the watch for incoming threats. And because there is often so much going on around us and with the sensitivity of the system turned up high enough, it will always find a potential threat, however tiny. Attention is almost literally like a magnifying glass for the mind. And Robinson presents the case study of a man named Simon who learned to refocus his attention like I am with you, not looking at my notes, uh, away from the signs and signals linked to failure, or better still, never being attracted to them going forward. There was a boost to his mood and his anxiety levels dropped, as you might expect. And because Simon's focus was improving, once he had his emotions under better control, failure and anxiety thoughts found it harder to edge into his consciousness. So moving on from this discussion, Robinson says that for tough times to make you stronger, you also have to be someone who sometimes defocuses their attention away from their self. And this might involve doing some maintenance type work on yourself. And there are some examples of that in the book. People who are strengthened by adversity almost always have this kind of capacity for going on, for going forwards. And a person has to be able to take on this kind of existential position Robinson talks about talks about he talks a lot about Nietzsche a bit without even knowing what exactly they're moving into so there's a kind of healthy acceptance of uncertainty though Robinson doesn't really talk too much about this there is a bit in the book that talks about fragmented communities broken families work pressures ruthless competition all the stuff that I'm sure you're uh, you, you know about already and obviously with the discussion of these kinds of topics it wouldn't be complete without discussing the amygdala those two arm and shape pieces at the core of our brain which are particularly active when people are anxious of course and so of, after over many years this leads to them becoming bigger and bigger because the networks of brain cells uh, become more and more strongly connected with repeated use so you've probably heard that so far so familiar but Robertson also draws from a fairly recent understanding of epigenetics though he doesn't really use that word so much and he talks about how thoughts and emotions can turn genes off and on physically reshaping the brain as they do so and these physical changes in turn mold our thoughts and emotions so it's a very sort of dynamic interactive system interplay between the environment and our brain and this is the inherent capacity he says shared by every living human being to have the means of shaping their own mental life though to what extent kind of regular people can do this when they have other things to do it probably involves effort and discipline of course but that's not to say that the regular person can't do this but the alternative is that just about anyone under a lot of stress can feel mentally slowed and fuzzy but i think the, the great strength of this book is to to show that there is alternative that, that change is possible and there are some other case studies to illustrate this of fairly regular people as well so in the closing chapters uh, some of the things i drew from the book were that if you don't worry about your ability so much in performance type situations stress can potentially boost your performance and i really like the discussion about the yerkes dodson curve which i won't get into now but you should check it out, check out the Yerkes Yerk Dodson curve on, on Wikipedia or something like that. I also learned that resilience needs focus. He says if you can keep your mind on the moment-to-moment -moment task of ordinary life, you'll be able to shield yourself from the extra stress which saps your energy and hence your strength. So yeah, those are some things about the book that I like. It was kind of a summary and a review as well at the same time. I didn't really do it justice. It's a, it's a very short video, this, but I do recommend that you go and find this book if you can. I think Ian Robinson deserves more attention than he gets. Oh, he's still alive. He's in his 90s, I believe, at the time of making this video. He was once a professor emeritus. I think he still might be. He gets his fair share of attention, but I think, I think it's a really good book, and I want to read some more of his books as well. I hope you like this video, and I will see you next time. Take it easy.